The Buccaneers bounce back in a big way against the Eagles. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this Monday episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am James Yarko at JYarko underscore Bucks, credential member of the media covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers as editor-in-chief of the 813.tv here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everydayers. And for that, I want to share my appreciation for your continued support of the show. One of the ways you can support the show is become a Locked On Bucks insider. You're going to get news, rumors, updates, general thoughts, one-on-one conversations with me via text message. No ads or hashtags or anything like that. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Bucks or click the link in the show notes to become an insider today. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Biggest takeaways and game balls coming up in a little bit, but we're going to start with the biggest moment in this one. And just like last week, it came really early in the game. For the first time in twenty-four games, the Buccaneers had a touchdown on their opening drive of the game. That drive was near perfection. Baker went eight of nine with a touchdown. He hit five different receivers that caught passes. Evans had two receptions. Palmer had two receptions. Godwin, Rashad, Bucky each had one. Rashad had one carry for 17 yards. They sliced and diced the Eagles defense all the way down the field before Mike Evans got the two yard touchdown reception to make him the Buccaneers all time leading scorer. More on that in a little bit. It was an absolute thing of beauty, but it wasn't the biggest moment. The actual biggest moment to me was the next possession when the Eagles offense got the ball for the first time in this game. Jalen Hurts throws an incomplete pass to Saquon Barkley on first down. Second down, Barkley gets the carry. He is stopped for no gain by Levante David. Then a pass to Dallas Goddard, gains seven yards. Levante David takes him down, and boom, a three and out by the Bucs defense. That drive set the tone for the rest of the day. And yes, things did get a little interesting there late in the first half and the beginning of the second half, but never were were the Bucs or, or Bucks fans on the verge of panic. The Bucs were never on the verge of a collapse. The defense went out there and took the ball right back for the offense to start this game off. So Baker hits Kate Otten for 16, Godwin for 26, Evans for 17, and then a 15-yard absolute bullet from Baker Mayfield to Trey Palmer gave the Bucs a quick 14 to nothing lead. At one point in the first half, Baker had three total touchdowns and three incomplete passes. It was an absolute clinic by this Buccaneers offense, but the tone was set by the defense. If the Eagles had come out and matched that opening drive touchdown, this game immediately turns into a dogfight. If the defense gives up a big play to Saquon Barkley or maybe Paris Campbell with the speed that he had to offer, that drive is completely different. The three and out forced by that defense is what everyone kind of expected the Bucs to do to Denver last week, and it's what propelled the Bucs to the lead that they jumped out to and never relinquished, never even got close to relinquishing. The Bucs had over 200 total yards of offense at one point in this game while the Eagles still had a net zero. Levante was making play after play. Vita Vea was making big plays. He had a big sack early in the game. Tyke Smith was playing well. He got a big pressure on Jalen Hurts that forced an incompletion. It was a collective effort by the defense to make sure that Philadelphia wasn't going to win this game. And to let people know that last week was a fluke, it was a letdown, and that game is not 
who the Buccaneers are as a football team. This is who the Buccaneers are as a football team. Six sacks on the day from a defense that had two in the first three games total. Levante had two, including one that caused a fumble. Anthony Nelson had one. Vita had one. Logan Hall, Yaya Diaby finally got back there and got himself a sack. The pass rush in this one was suffocating. Jalen Hurts finished with 158 passing yards. That's his fewest passing yards in a game this season and his fewest since December of last year when he completed 17 passes for just 143 yards against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, to be fair, he did have 55 passing yards in the final week of the season against the New York Giants, but he left that game with an injury, so that doesn't really count. He didn't play a full game there against the New York Giants. This Bucks defense, though, continues to stifle him. It continues to confuse Nick Sirianni. It's causing problems for offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. Liam Cohen won his chess match against Vic Fangio. This game could have been a lot more lopsided if it weren't for the Bucs getting a case of the drops for quite a long stretch there in the middle of the game. And that all started with Cameron Johnson dropping a touchdown pass as he hit the ground. After that, it seemed like no one on the team could really catch there for a minute, but they got things back on track and they finished the job. They answered the Eagles touchdown drive to open the second half with one of their own. They forced a turnover. They got a field goal. And from there, they coasted. They played keep away. They played kill the clock. But I cannot say enough about this defense and how well they started things off. Saquon Barkley, 84 rushing yards. He had a huge run to set up a, a touchdown for the Eagles. But as I mentioned on Friday, the Eagles were 2-0 and when Saquon Barkley rushed for 100 or more yards. They are now 0-2 when Saquon Barkley does not rush for 100 yards or more yards. He finished with 84 in this one. That ties Jameer Gibbs of the Detroit Lions for the most rushing yards allowed to a running back by the Buccaneers this season. It was all on the back of Levante David, who set the tone early. The Bucs defense as a whole stood Saquon Barkley up three consecutive plays at the goal line to not allow him to score a touchdown. They end up getting a touchdown to Paris Campbell on that drive, but this Bucks defense was not going to let Saquon Barkley beat them, and he didn't. It was an absolute thing of beauty, and it all starts with that first Eagles possession where the Bucks defense just would not let the Eagles get going, would not let them move the chains, would not let them put together a drive to answer the Buccaneers' touchdown, and then you had a very, very quick 14 to nothing lead for the Bucs, took the air out from, from the Eagles, and from there, it was pretty much game over. Biggest takeaways on both sides of the ball, that is coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You all know how much I love going to live events, concerts, sporting events. I'm constantly talking on the show about a concert or a game that I'm getting ready to go see. And the first place that I'm checking out when I look for tickets is Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks out, Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And with all-in pricing, I know exactly what I'm going to spend up front, so there's no surprises when I get to check out. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Whether you're into dodging tackles on the field or sharing from your couch, the Joint Chiropractic has your back. Literally, as an official chiropractor of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're here to make sure you're always in the game, no matter your role. If you're feeling the pain after a long week, or just looking to stay active, they offer personalized care to help you bounce back stronger. 
90% of elite athletes, including NFL pros, rely on chiropractic care to stay at the top of their game and perform at their best. At the joint, you don't need an appointment. Just walk in and get the care you need same day. No scheduling hassles. Just walk in when it's convenient for you. And here's the real kicker. As a Bucks fan, you can get your first visit for just $19. Head over to Buccaneers.com, check out the contest and promotion section under the Fans tab, and download the offer. A great deal for great fans. Head to thejoint.com to find your nearest Tampa area location. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Biggest takeaways coming up in just a second. But first, the new Locked On NFL is here. Locked On NFL is now two shows every day. First, the madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your morning with a double shot of NFL espresso. Then stop by the barbershop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. You add in the Locked On local experts and you get unprecedented NFL insight, hot opinions, and detailed breakdowns all in 30 minutes. Make the Madman Tyler Rowland and the Barber Tony Wiggins your second listen at the new Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. My biggest takeaway on offense is that this Buccaneers team can, in fact, run the football. It didn't take a huge 30-plus yard gain to get those averages up. It didn't take a miracle. It didn't take, you know, a complete lay down and collapse by the Philadelphia defense. It just took patience and picking your spots. Bucky and Rashad both finished with 10 carries and both finished with 49 rushing yards. Bucky Irving had his first career touchdown. On the flip side, Rashad White had two catches for 35 yards, but both of these running backs got going, played incredibly well, and had some impressive runs. Bucky's longest run was 15 yards, while Rashad's was that 17-yarder on the opening drive. And yes, Baker Mayfield should get a lot of credit for opening up the run game with his razor-sharp accuracy early in this football game, but they looked like a far more competent running offense this week compared to the first three weeks. We have to keep seeing both backs be involved in the run game. We once again saw both backs on the field at the same time, which is always fun, and it's always an interesting wrinkle for the offense and creates mismatches against the defense, and it's not all going to happen overnight, but this game should have given the Bucs the confidence that they needed to continue to pound the rock. I have said it time and time again. Both of these guys are home run threats waiting to happen. It just takes one missed tackle, one slipped tackle, one juke, and they can be off to the races. They both ran really, really well, and 10 opportunities apiece isn't a ton, but they both average nearly five yards a carry, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those carries to be impactful. This was well above Rashad's 2.1 yards per carry average that he came into the game with, so the Bucks should be in a spot where they believe they can go into Atlanta this week and really grind it out with either guy. That's a game where you're going to want to slow things down a little bit. You're going to want to run the ball effectively, kill a very hostile crowd, and just take your sweet, sweet time going down the field, hopefully ending those drives with some type of points. This game showed that the Bucs can do exactly that. Hopefully, Luke Gedeke is able to be cleared for the Thursday night game against Atlanta. That would be a huge boost. But even if he isn't, the Bucs know that they can get the run game going with the pieces that they have on the offensive line, plus some of the tight ends who did a fantastic job blocking on Sunday. This was kind of that next step. It was, it was a stepping stone to an even more effective rushing attack. Again, it doesn't happen overnight. You got to take little steps at a time with as poorly as this rushing attack started off the season. This was a huge step in the right direction. As a team, the Buccaneers rushed for over 100 yards. Now, Bucky and Rashad combined for 98 of that. Sean Tucker had one carry for a couple of yards. Baker had 10 yards rushing. But as a team, this was one of their best rushing games of the season need to build on that and see that continue this week in Atlanta, especially on a short week. My biggest takeaway on defense, 
it should come as no surprise, but Levante David is still just absolutely incredible. I picked him as my player of the game on Friday's preview because he had to be the guy in this one to set the tone for the defense. And did he ever two big tackles on the opening Eagles drive, two sacks, a forced fumble, a pass defense, the team leader in tackles. There are now two players in Buccaneers history with 1500 tackles, Derek Brooks and Levante David. He was incredible and he played like he was 25 years old. He was all over the place, constantly getting after Saquon Barkley, constantly in the face of Jalen Hurts and knocking him around. This was one of the best individual performances that we've seen from Levante David in the past couple of years. And when we talked about it on Friday, I had mentioned that it had been a little bit of a quiet season so far for Levante David. If the Bucs were going to win this game, we were likely going to be talking about a 10-plus tackle performance by Levante David and that he was going to lead the team. Well, he didn't quite get to 10, but he did lead the team in tackles with eight. Just an absolute clinic by Levante David. I also do want to mention Vita Vea a little bit here because you could visibly see the impact that Vita Vea's presence had on this team in this game. Just from him being on the field, it opened up so many things. He didn't get a lot of tackles. He only had three tackles, but one was a sack. One was a tackle for a loss. It's what he does for the players around him, opening things up for guys like Levante David, like Anthony Nelson, like Yaya Diaby, yeah, to be able to go out there and get the quarterback and make big plays because of all the attention that he commands on the interior of that line. That sets up one-on-ones for the guys on either side of him and then sets up one-on-ones for the guys coming off the edge. That's something that the Bucs were sorely missing the last couple of weeks, and it's going to play a huge role. And I cannot overstate that enough. Vita Vea's presence is going to be massive for the Bucs against the Falcons this week when they have to go up against Bijan Robinson. Just like Saquon Barkley with the Eagles, Bijan Robinson can take over a game. So the Bucs are going to have their hands full. Having Vita Vea there helps immensely. Game balls are being passed out. That is next on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And you're going to get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. The Bucs have jumped back into second in the odds to win the NFC South, despite the fact that they are in first place. They currently sit at plus 195, trailing the Falcons, who they face on Thursday, at plus 165. And those Falcons are two and a half point home favorites against the Bucs. Get started this week with your $200 in bonus bets just for placing a $5 bet all at FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. Wrapping things up here on a victory Monday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast, and it is time to hand out some game balls. You all know how we do it, too, for each side, and the top one, Handed out is the official player of the game, the golden game ball, if you will. And it goes to Baker Mayfield in this one. Mayfield was outstanding. And even though his numbers were good, 30 for 47, 347 yards, two touchdowns, plus 10 yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown, they should have been even better. If it weren't for some of those terrible drops that we saw, we're talking about 400 plus yards and at least one probably two more passing touchdowns. This could have been an all-timer for Baker Mayfield. He was sharp from the jump, got a lot of different receivers involved, eight different receivers for the Buccaneers, caught passes in this one. The only one that was targeted and didn't have a catch was Cameron Johnson, and he dropped what should have been his first career touchdown there in the first half. 
Baker has just been so good this season, and he continues to get better with this team, with Liam Cohen, with this offense. He didn't have to run for his life in this one, and he has a tough Falcons pass rush coming up, so we're going to see a lot of those quick passes again that we saw against the Philadelphia Eagles to open up the game and all throughout, but what an absolute game from Baker Mayfield there, uh, especially with Tom Brady in the commentator's booth. Fox was trying to start some stuff. Baker and Brady had a conversation at the end of the game where, where Baker was awarded Brady's LFG player of the game. Um, you know, it, I, I, I agree with Baker. Baker told the media uh, after the game that his comments about Brady were kind of taken out of context and blown way out of proportion. I tend to agree. Um, but, you know, people love to talk about things like that. So it is what it is. But in absolute just great performance from Baker Mayfield. Arguably his best performance of the year. I know you could point to the numbers in Washington being better, but I think given the, the importance of this game and the magnitude of needing to get that win coming off of a really bad loss against the Denver Broncos, this was the best game for Baker Mayfield yet this season. Game ball number two, the top defensive player, it's Levante David. He's my top defensive player in this one. I talked a lot about him just a little bit ago, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. Eight tackles, two sacks, pass breakup, forced fumble. Levante did it all for the Buccaneers in this one. Need to see him replicate this type of performance again on Thursday in Atlanta against Kirk Cousins, against B. John Robinson and those Atlanta Falcons, but a vintage Levante game against Philadelphia this week. His buddy Devin White got in a little trouble during the game. Devin White, healthy scratch, retweeted something about the forced fumble by Levante David on Jalen Hurts. He quickly deleted that, uh, realizing, you know, I don't know if he realized it, if somebody messaged him, was like, yo, this looks really bad that you just retweeted something about a forced fumble by your former team against your current team. And then he was promptly contacted to report for PED testing after, you know, after the game. And he wasn't even in the stadium. Like it was, it was a very odd uh, social media I exchange there uh, for Devin White. But, you know, Levante still out there doing Levante things. Devin White, you know, I hope he gets on track. I really, really do. He he was he was a fun player to watch, and that's been quite the fall from grace for for Devin White. Game ball number three, my second best offensive performance of the game, and this one was tough. There was a lot of players it could have gone to, uh, and like Baker Mayfield, the stat line should have been a lot better for this guy, but it's Mike Evans, ninety four yards and a touchdown on eight receptions. And now he's the team's all-time leading scorer. Think about that for a minute. A wide receiver being a franchise's all-time leader in points. There are only three players in NFL history that are the all-time leading scorer for their team and aren't kickers. It's Jerry Rice in San Francisco, Emmett Smith with the Dallas Cowboys, and now Mike Evans with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He continues to build on his Hall of Fame resume. Baker and Liam knew that this was a guy that they that didn't get a lot of targets or opportunities over the last couple of weeks. They went to him early, that very first play of the game. It was a pass to Mike Evans. The first touchdown of the game, it was to Mike Evans. They wanted to get him involved early and often. He had a couple of drops. That's to be expected at this point for Mike Evans. I think all Buccaneers fans know that. But he had he, he just has those days, you know, and he went to the locker room before the end of the first half. Might have had some cramping issues, needed an IV. You know, there, there could have been some issues there. But overall, eight receptions for 94 yards and a score. It was a great game and an all-time moment from the greatest Buccaneer of all time. And then my final game ball on the defensive side, this was another tough one. There were another, you know, there were a few guys that it could have gone to here, but I got to give it to Vita Vea. And I talked about him earlier too. Having Vita back is so big for this defense. The impact that he has on everyone around him is so blatantly significant 
you can see the stark difference between the play of the defense last week and the play of the defense against the Eagles on Sunday. Vita is that anchor up front. He is the one that clears the way for blitzing linebackers. He's the one that eats up the double teams to give the outside guys one-on-one opportunities. He, I mean, he was being double teamed and still took down Saquon Barkley for no gain. Like, there aren't many, if any, nose tackles in the NFL that can do exactly what we saw Vita Vea do on Sunday. You fight through two 350-plus pound guys to take down the NFL's leading rusher for no gain. It, it was incredible. He's just an absolute force in the middle of this defense for the Buccaneers, and he opens up so many different players to make plays. Todd Bowles was able to get really creative and really disguise some things thanks to big number 50 being back on the field. And it wasn't something that Bowles was able to do last week against Denver, and it cost him. It wasn't something that he was really able to do in the second half against Detroit, and it almost cost them. You know, the secondary stepped up in a huge, huge way in that Detroit game. But when 50 is on the field, everything else opens up for that defense. Every player around him gets that much better because of what Vita brings to this defense. It was great to have him back. You saw the impact. It was a great game from Vita Vea. That is going to do it for this episode of Locked on Bucks. Please check out everything going on over at the 813.tv. Follow on Twitter at Locked on Bucks at JRCO underscore Bucks. Become a Locked on Bucks insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Bucks or click the link in the show notes. Um, And make sure you are subscribed on YouTube with those notifications turned on or uh, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding victory Monday. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. Want to thank you so much for joining me right here on Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 